Hello. Welcome everyone to this uh, first session, regular session. Uh, regular session, get it? Regular expressions uh, by Joel Lord. He is from uh, Hall, Ottawa, Canada. I'm also Canadian. I'm Peter McIntyre. I'm from Prince Edward Island, so I'm one of the organizers. We're very glad to have uh, you people here and have these sessions of top quality people from around the world, basically, um, to give you some training and some specialty in these kind of uh, uh, unique areas of programming. So please welcome Joel and uh, have some time. And has, uh, he's got some time at the end to ask questions, but I'm sure I'll leave it up to him how he wants to, if he wants to interrupt what he's doing to answer questions or not. So. Uh, welcome, Joel, and enjoy your enjoy the show. Thank you, Peter. So, all right, let's get this started. Um, yeah. So, I will try to have a little bit of time at the end if you have any questions. Uh, if you have a specific regular expression that you're trying to write, please don't ask me that. Uh, yeah, we we'll just never end with that. But uh, if you have any questions about the talk, I'll be more than happy to help you out with that. So, regular expressions on why to use them. So first of all, I just uh, wanted to make sure uh, this is meant to be a one-on-one -on -one course. So if you do understand those regular expressions, you're probably not at the right place. Uh, if you don't understand them and you're a bit scared at the look of them, you're at the perfect place. So a little bit about, uh, a little bit about me. So uh, like Peter said, I'm from, uh, well, actually the Ottawa region in Canada, uh, right across the river, so in Hall, Quebec. So that's why I have a French accent. We work in French and yeah, so it's the first time I'm giving this talk in English also, so please bear with me. Um, I'm a co-owner of uh, a startup company. Uh, we do uh, web applications for uh, small businesses, uh, mostly in PHP. Uh, we do a little bit of JavaScript too, of course, like everyone else. Um, yeah, and I'm also vice president of engineering, so I'm supervising most of the developers' work. I'm also the one that usually um, take charge of the new, uh, the, the juniors that start at our company, and I try to help them with the code. I'm a big fan of regular expressions. I use them everywhere in my code, and when people look at the, the code base that we have, most of the, one of the big things that I, I find lacking is that people don't understand what it means. So I've been trying to implement some ways to make them a little bit more readable and how to actually understand them, and, don't, and so they're not scared about it. So that's, uh, yeah, a little bit about me. How this presentation will go. Uh, like I said, it's meant to be a one-on-one, -on -one, so first part is a little bit boring. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll try to go uh, through um, different uh, meta characters, all those weird signs that you see in regular expressions, uh, how they work, what it does. Uh, so it's a bit long on the, uh, for that part. After that, we'll see a little bit more of a more uh, built, like, or useful regular expressions. Uh, like I said, this is not a course for like specific regular expressions, so we'll just go through a few examples. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it, and how to use them in PHP, obviously, because that's why we're here, right? So a little bit of terminology. I'll be using some of the terms, um, like a little bit mixed, so I just want to make sure everyone understands what I mean. So pattern, when you're, sorry. I'll just, okay, patterns, you still there, right? I'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, patterns. When you're using regular expression, well, something that we call sometimes regular expression, sometimes we also call it a pattern. So I allow to be using both, so just so you know. Also, if you're looking at the documentation on php.net, you'll see the word pattern used pretty much everywhere. Subject is the string that you want to match against. I'm hoping that you know what a regular expression is, more or less. Um, so it's some string that you'll use to match some part of a string, and the subject is the string that you want to match. And the match, well, you might have guessed it, it's the match. So whatever part of the string, you know, the, 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 sorry, the subject that you submitted to the, the function, uh, the match will be the part that matches the regular expression or the pattern. Is that clear? Hoping so. So first thing, uh, regular expressions are surrounded by delimiters. Delimiters can be just about anything. Uh, well, there's a lot of them that you can use. 
once again, PHP.net has like a full extent to like all the lists and everything. I usually use uh, parenthesis. I find it more friendly, more user readable, or less scary actually. Uh, most people use slashes, so I'll be using both of them during the presentation. So because uh, I took some examples from code that I made, so I might uh, use some parentheses, but I try to use uh, slashes. You can also use uh, hash lines or, yeah, like I said, a lot of different uh, delimiters, but I just want to tell you that I might be using both, so. So here we go, we have our first regular expression. So basically it's slash followed by a slash. So it's two delimiters, which mean, well, match anything. So I just wanted to show you how I'll show my examples too. So the first one, which is my email, uh, matches that regular expression. I guess it matches just anything. So yeah, we have a match. The quick brown box jumps over a lazy dog, also matches. And worm ipsum will also match. So now let's get started with a simple string. Um, like we said, what, I, what you want to do with a regular expression is match something in a string. So in this regular expression, I'm trying to match the word blue in a string. So I use the delimiters to surround the regular expression, letters B, L, U, E in that order, and does it match? So yes, I have the word blue, it matches, because obviously it contains the pattern of letters B, L, U, E. Then we have the word blueberry, does it match? It does, because it also has the letters B, L, U, E in it. And if we try red, well, it won't match. Or you can't see it. Uh, well, it won't match because it doesn't have that specific pattern of letters in it. So that's what a regular expression is. So yeah, this one wasn't really useful, obviously. Um, so let's start with meta characters. Meta characters are what are used to uh, match some set of uh, characters or kind of like wildcards, basically, if you want. And that's what the, the, the part that gets scary about those regular expressions. All those signs that you see, they're meta characters. So we'll start to see a few of them, just the basic meta characters. So you have a little bit of an idea how to use them. First one that I'll show you is the plus sign. So plus sign placed next to a character means match at least one of that character. So in the examples that I, that I have as a regular expression, BL plus UE, it asks for B, uh, letter B followed by at least one L and uh, U and E. So our first example, blue, once again, uh, it matches because it has at least one L next to the B. The next one, B, U, E doesn't match because this one doesn't have at least one L. So that's, we're starting to see how it works and how it can be used. Actually, so you can put a walkout right in the middle of your pattern and you'll see if it matches. And B, L, 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 U, E, this one also matched because it has at least one L. That's what you wanted. So once again, not really useful, but we're getting somewhere. Second meta character that I wanted to introduce to you today, the star. So a star is basically the same thing as the plus sign, but it matches none or infinite of that character. So in this case, I have the uh, BL star UE. <coughs> and let's go through the examples that I showed you on the last example. The first one matches, there's at least, or there's none or infinite L. The second one also matches. Didn't match last time because we wanted at least one. This time, we don't need one. So it matches. And the LLLU, it matches. Sorry. Like I said, the first part is a little bit boring. And there's a lot of examples, but we're going somewhere with that. Next meta character, the question mark. Question mark is used, is often used actually, um, to match zero or none of that character. So if you have like an optional character that you want somewhere, this is the way to use it. So BL question mark UE means B followed by zero or one instance of L and then UE. So let's go back to the same examples once again. So blue matches, there's one L, that's fine. BUE matches because there's no L. And this time, BLLLUE doesn't match because you have more than one. Now we also have the curly brackets that are often used. 
curly bra brackets are used for an interval. So basically it's the same thing that we've been seeing, just a number of instances of a speci specific character. But in this case, you specify the number that you want. So in this case, I said I want, well, either one, two, or three. So an interval between one and three of the letter L. Let's go back through the same examples once again. BLUE, it matches. BUE doesn't match this time, because I wanted at least one. And BLLUE, there's three L's in there, so it matches. Uh, two more little things about uh, the curly brackets. You can also specify just a number, uh, like in this example, BL2UE. So if there's two L's, like in this case, it matches. And you can also specify an infinite number, but with a minimum bracket, like at least two, but up to unlimited number of that director. So in this case, it does match because there's uh, seven or eight L's. Another meta character, you have the dot, which is also often used. Dot matches anything, uh, but only one. So, uh, yeah. In this case, it's used uh, B.UE. dot UE. It'll match anything instead of the dot. So blue, it works. BUE, this time doesn't match, because we want at least something to be in, in place of the dot. This one doesn't work. And B percent UE, I don't know why you would like use that, but it still matches, because there's at least one character. Now we have uh, two special uh, meta characters that I can also be used about for positioning. Uh, they tend to be really underused. You have to be aware of those when you try to make regular expressions. First one is the caret, which says, uh, actually caret must be used as the first character. And it says, well, I want this part of the, the, the pattern to be used at the beginning of my string. So in this case, I place the caret, I said BLUE, and that means, well, I want BLUE at the beginning of my string. So we have blue once again, and it matches. Blueberry it also matches, because it starts with blue. And my t-shirt is blue, which is not the case today, but it still doesn't match this time, because it's at the end of the string. Uh, just a small note before I forget, caret is also used for uh, negations. So whenever it's used anywhere in the string, it's a negation. Uh, I won't cover the negations in this uh, small talk, but uh, just so you know, so if you want to use them somewhere in the middle, just be careful with that. Next one is the cache sign. Cache sign is basically the same thing, but, well, same thing but the opposite. Um, means has to be at the end of the string. So once again, it has to be the last character in your regular expression. And yeah, just like the carrot said at the beginning of the string, this one means at the end of the string. So if you take the same examples once again, blue, it matches because blue is at the end of the string. Blueberry doesn't match this time because it's at the beginning of the string. And my shirt is blue, it matches this time. That's about it for the specific meta characters that I wanted to introduce today. Like I said, I just want you to have a small idea. There's a lot of documentation on php.net about those if you want to go take a look. But I, at least I want you to know that those exist and how to use them a little bit. So you can also use intervals. So between square brackets means match anything that's between those two square brackets. This example, I put all the alphabet in it. And if I try with quick prompt box, it matches, because all those layers are in this interval here. If you try with 127001, won't match, because in the interval that we specified, we don't have any numbers, and we don't have any dots. And caps lock, this one won't work, because the only letters that we specified in our interval are small letters, or yeah, small caps. Uh, an easier, easier way to use intervals, because you don't want to use all the alphabet every time, is a really a, sorry, a real interval, actually. So in this case, I specified A to Z, and capital letters A to Z also. So just going back through the examples once again, quick brown box, whoops, <laughs> and there it goes. <laughs> sorry about that. Let's 
by Firefox, no? But it's like kind of practice that like 10 times before I left home and always work. <coughs> That's part of Murphy's Law, right? There it goes. <laughs> okay, that's great. I might have run out of power. I'm not sure, but you can get those stress balls actually at the kiosk uh, from uh, uh, what is it? Engine yard. It's really useful right now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll try to plug it in first, and we'll see. But if you could help me find a place to plug it in. Yep. That would be perfect. Oh, great. Okay, so we're out for a while now. <laughs> okay, let's try mm, shutting it down. <laughs> and now let's just cross our fingers and hope it will still move. Yeah, or normally. <laughs> Which is actually a big step. In the old days, if you shut your computer off in the middle, it yeah. wouldn't come back up again. So I'm hoping that it will come back. Now you just try it. Yeah, it's probably worth it. Let's just try it. Maybe. Yeah. But in the old days, it was, you know, don't touch it. Does yeah. yeah. it overwrote the OS? That's what it was going to be. Once again, sorry about that. Yeah, does anyone have any questions while we're. Oh, great. How, uh, we have a nice blue screen now. How do you go about testing and debugging your regular expressions? Uh, one of the things, uh, sorry, about debugging regular expressions? Yeah, and I mean, would, would you write test cases to test I'll, your edge cases and stuff like that? Or I guess I, I, I don't know. Yes, about um, uh, test cases using when you're re using regular expression, uh, really, really important. Uh, I, like you saw in some of my slides that were coming, um, they, uh, a lot of regular expressions can be, uh, can be, sometimes they can accept some things that you don't really want to. So you really have to test all the different cases. Um, it's kind of hard to figure out what all the cases will be. Uh, that one comes with experience mostly. But by writing a lot of, uh, and like whenever you're writing any tests, actually, you just try to figure out all the cases that could go wrong, and you just try to, to include them in your tests. But uh, it's one thing that you, it's well, yeah. So it's always nice to do some test uh, sort of DDD, but it's not always possible, obviously. But uh, at least have someone try to find a way to, to crash it, basically. Okay, it's not attempting repair. Um, we have another computer here. I'm not sure if I can. Uh, anyone uh, had any questions? Sorry. I was curious, and maybe it, maybe it'd be better to just look at the documentation. But I was wondering about ranges. Can you specify ranges in reverse order, and can you specify ranges that? Are not like, say for example, lowercase a to capital B, or lowercase a to zero. Yes. Does that work? And in what order does that you need to specify that? Or is it smarter? You can you can actually use uh, just about anything during any uh, The next slide I was about to show you uh, is actually um, uh, a regular expression that basically it says just yeah whatever. So it's between square brackets. It's just a space uh, dash tilde. So it matches any printable character. So uh, actually, it's the opposite. So tilt dash space. But uh, you have, uh, if you look on, on the internet, you will find some uh, list of all the printable characters and in what order they come in. I usually recommend to always use the uh, still the, the interval, the specific interval that you want. Because uh, else, like one of, like I said, one of the things I really like is to make sure that my code is readable. 
And if you have something like A to Z, well, does it include capital letters or not? And nobody's sure. So I always recommend to use the specific interval that you want. So like A to Z, then capital A to Z, then 0 to 9. Uh, in the intervals, you can also specify uh, the spe uh, specific characters, like the first sentence, first sign, or a hyphen. Hyphen has to be at the end. But for me, so it's sort of self confident that's the idea. Like, if a person has to follow you up, maybe you're using a little more fancy projection than they live so they stare at it. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, yeah, that's what I mean by being readable. Um, it has to be like, you don't. Okay. So readable to somebody right, who knows right. some yeah. regular expressions, but it's not necessarily. Right. 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 No, exactly. Right. Right. So, yeah, right. human readable. So, um, one of the big things uh, that I want to introduce if my computer ever starts back is uh, how to make, actually make them a little bit more readable than what you usually see. So. Is there a computer that's available, or like is this? Oh, no, that's just on? a screen. Oh, it's just a screen. That's great. Computer? Uh, uh, yeah. Like, give it a try. This one. Thanks a lot. And you are? I'm Andrew. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Okay. I have to go through my emails to back up. Should be still on because it was on a few minutes ago. I have it on my screen now, so it should be there anytime now. This one is left up to my thing. Can you tell your map to send it to the projector? Do you have it? So, quick. 
Okay, we'll try to do with that. Sorry about it. And uh, I have my own personal technician taking a look at it. So that's where we were at. Um, so intervals, uh, A to Z and A to Z. So I think we covered that one, right? Can we dim the lights in here? Sorry to interrupt. Can we dim the lights in here? I don't know. Can we dim the lights? Yes. Uh, Okay, other intervals that you can use, uh, as I was uh, talking about just a few seconds ago, uh, also digits, so zero to nine. Uh, you can also use, um, yeah, zero to nine letters. Uh, you can also include correct, uh, different characters like uh, percent or uh, hyphens or ampersands. This is the one I was talking about. This one, which basically means, yeah, whatever. So space dash tilt, so it means all printable characters that you can find. So print bound box with percentage signs will work. Uh, all those funny signs, it'll work too. And cap clocks won't work because there's a non-printable character in there, but obviously you can't see it because it's non-printable. So that's about it for uh, intervals. Uh, now I'm introducing uh, modifiers. Modifiers are placed at the end of your, of your regular expression. So in this case, it's the letter E, I, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so this, what uh, modifiers do is that they change a little bit the behavior of your regular expression. In this case, it will make sure that you're, it'll ask for a case insensitive search in your string. So this one is widely used. So once again, we through, go through the examples. I specified an interval of letters and case insensitive, so this one will match. 127001 won't match, once again, because there's no, dig, uh, we didn't want any digits or dots and caps lock will work this time because we want a case insensitive search. I'm trying to get, go a little bit faster because <laughs> we lost a bit of time here, but uh, uh, sub patterns. So a nice new thing, uh, new thing that you can use in regular expressions is that you can actually split your big regular expression in smaller parts. So, and they're called sub patterns. So in this case, uh, as you can see, we're starting to get some real regular expression here. Uh, I specified uh, one sub pattern here for the first three digits, uh, three characters, and the last three. Yeah. You'll see where they come in handy a little bit later on, because right now, uh, actually, it doesn't really mind. It, it doesn't change anything. So that's a regular expression for a Canadian postal code. Uh, Canadian postal codes actually have this format, so uh, letter, digit, letter, digit, and yeah. And is it looking for a space there? It is looking for a space right there. So basically what I'm asking for is uh, letter, digit, letter, followed by a space, followed by digit, letter, digit. So in this case, the first one will match. Second one, which is AAAA, won't match because it doesn't have digits in the, space, in the places that we wanted them. And the last one also won't match. So actually a good question about the space because this one doesn't have a space. And we want one. So it's still about sub-patterns, and we're getting to more complicated regular expression as we go on. I, I thought to myself, well, OK, I'm going to the United States, so maybe I should make a regular expression that will match postal codes, Canadian postal codes, and zip codes also. So I changed it a little bit, and I'm using the patterns here to introduce the pipe also. Pipe means or, like it always does, actually. So in this case, I want either a letter or a digit. So that's my first sub-pattern followed by a digit, followed by, once again, letter or digit. I have this, the space again, but I added a question mark next to it. So if you really can recall, question, marks me, question mark means zero or one. So it can have one in the Canadian postal code, but not necessarily in the American zip code. Followed by, once again, a digit and letter or digit, and followed by a final digit, and also has a question mark, because we have six characters, sorry, 
six characters in Canadian postal codes, but only five in, in the American zip code. So this regular, regular expression that has been tested works on this one, so h 4 h 5 which is my postal code. 02142, which is the zip code for the nerd center, uh, also matches. But this time, since we added the question mark next to the space, the last one also matched, even if it doesn't have space. So that's exactly one of the cases that we were talking about when you really need to go into testing and to be sure that your regular expression, because there's a lot of tricky little parts that can make you miss something if you add it too much things. But in the US, we don't have any that start with a, uh, an alpha character. No, it doesn't. That's why here I have either a letter or a, a number to start with. So I take both. But how would you change? We, we went, uh, that would not, uh, the last uh, example would not be a real uh, zip code in the United States. No, it definitely those two wouldn't work uh, in the United States, but it would accept Canadian postal code. Say if you have an application that is North American, or I don't know how it works in Mexico, but if you want to watch something in Canada and the United States. So you're saying the person input in the Canadian symptoms, but it's in the space. Yes, it'll match. I had another question over there. Can you explain what, what does the modifier at the end do again, the slash i? Slash i means case insensitive. Okay. So in this case, if someone entered the postal code, and it always happens in Canada, people just enter, they, they just type and they don't put in the capital letters, so it still matches. Uh, one last thing, uh, escaping characters, meta characters actually. So you're all used to uh, escaping, I hope, if you've been using PHP a little bit. Yeah. So if you want to add uh, like a dot, for instance, if you want to require a dot in your, uh, in your subject, like in this case, it's like example.com, uh, you need to backslash before. So just like regular escaping. So in this case, example.com, it does match. Uh, we want it, or I just go through it first. So A to Z, zero to nine, one to 63 characters, followed by a dot, followed by three letters. Example.com matches. Example.ce, which is the Canadian top level domain, won't match in this case. So that's a nice case of thinking a little bit more when you're doing regular expressions, because if you only ask for three, it'll only match for three. So that means you would have to escape so, slash parents brackets, curly brackets. Uh, yes, any, any meta character. Like I said, uh, I encourage you uh, a lot to go to php.net. Uh, the documentation is really complete there, but it's kind of overwhelming when you look at it the first time, so that's why I want to introduce you a little bit to it first. Uh, last one, www.example.com will also match. And once again, it's a case where you have to be careful with regular expression, because actually the part that matches here is www.exa. And it's probably not the part that you want to extract, because you probably don't care about that part, but you want the last part. So you have to be careful, you have to put uh, some, some uh, ors or carrots in there, in there to be sure that it does match the, what you actually want to match. Okay, so looping the loop about regular expression, meta characters, and all that, and almost finished the boring part. Um, that was one of the regular expression that I showed you at the beginning, so I was just hoping that you still remember it. So now that you're all regular expression experts, right, you all know what it, that this one is matching. So yeah, it's just for matching uh, emails, basically. So we're asking for any characters from them, at least one, which is the plus sign, followed by the at sign, some letters, uh, at least one letter to start with, because uh, domain names start by a letter, followed by a few characters, dot, and in this case, I used two, I've used two to six, and either letters or the dot. So you will see in the second example, at mysite.qc.ca, which are the domain names for Quebec province, uh, since it has two dots and uh, five, uh, six, digit, uh, six characters at the end, it matches this condition here. It's a lot of uh, different things to look at it. I think it's going a little bit faster about that. But. And the last one, at 333.com, doesn't match because we want at least one character before the add sign. So it's a nice way to add validation if you want to check before you enter the, uh, the data into your database, for example. You want to be sure that uh, it's, it's written in the right way. It's a nice way to use it. So how do you actually make them reader, user readable? Because the last one that we saw, obviously, um, no one said, oh yeah, I know what it is. 
um, even if you're all experts now, um, how do you actually make it re user or human readable? And that's what I tried to teach my juniors at uh, Antanash. One thing that we have on our whiteboard it's written like this big. <laughs> Always quote, I said, the guidance of maintaining your code will be a violent psychopath who knows where you live. Nobody actually knows. It's the first person that said that, but it's cited all over, all over the internet. So be careful. Make sure that everybody can read some, some of your code. So here comes the X modifier. Modifiers, uh, is the, I introduced them a little bit earlier, in the case insensitive modifier. So you can also add an X at the end. Well, this is the original regular expression that we just saw for emails. And we can write it this way. So using the X modifier at the end, it means ignore all white spaces and ignore everything after a hash line. If you want to put a hash line in your regular expression, obviously you'll have to escape it first. So as you can see, it's a lot easier to read right now. So you have the opening delimiters, the ending delimiters. The first one is, well, the username. So you can add more details if you want, but any digit letter or at least one. And then the famous add sign, followed by server name, followed by the not so famous dot, and followed by the TLD. So can you guess this one? This is the uh, one of the, the two that I showed you at the beginning. Now that you're all experts once again, oh, you still can't read it, because it's you, you have to think a little bit about it actually. So. Oh. Phone number, thank you. But if you do write it this way, it's a lot easier to figure it out. Especially if you have someone reading your code, who's been reading your code for hours, you get the guest fired, he doesn't want to figure that out. So just looking at this one, well, you can have a parenthesis, which is optional, either zero or one, followed by three characters, followed by, I'm using the five signs again, so either a hyphen, which has been escaped, a space, which also needs to be escaped in this case, because the X modifier ignores uh, white spaces. Mm -hmm. And maybe an optional ending parenthesis, and followed by three more digits, and optional sign, and three more digits, uh, four more digits, sorry. So how to use them in uh, PHP? So that's, where, that's why we're all here. It's a PHP convention, right? So pre-reg split, or break split, uh, it's used to split an array, uh, sorry, <clears throat> a string into an array. Uh, if you've used PHP with uh, strings a lot, uh, you probably know the split function already. Basically, it's the same thing, but it uses a regular expression to split the different elements. Sorry. So, for example, let's say we have this string that comes into your PHP, you want to process it. You want to extract all the keywords in here, and you want to put them in an array, in an array. So we have keywords separated by commas, which is, yeah, keywords separated by commas. So let's start by writing a regular expression. The only thing that we want to match is the comma. So we have a nice regular expression with two delimiters and a comma between it. And let's all put it together, so we have the pure split function, uh, pass the regular expression as the first argument, the string as the second argument, and you get this result. Obviously, it's exactly the same thing as using the split function, uh, but it's even more complicated because you had to actually build a regular expression to match the comma. So or it's not really useful. Or explode, right? Or explode, yes, sir. Um, and we still get those uh, spaces there that we don't want. So that's where actually the uh, regular expression or the theory split is actually very useful. So let's take another example. Okay, right. here's a little bit of more complicated string. So let's say you wanted to extract the keywords in, the, uh, in that string. So you have some separated by commas, some by semicolons, you have some spaces that are in, yeah, just like any user would do when they never know what they're doing. I also probably have some uh, line breaks in there. So let's try to split it. We'll build a nice user readable or human readable regular expression. So yeah, it's probably a little bit overkill here, but uh, so zero more spaces followed by comma or semicolon followed by zero more spaces. So that's the regular expression for the part that will split the array. 
So what we'll get as a result is this. So all the keywords have been separated, white spaces have been removed because they've been used as a delimiter, and you get this nice keyword, uh, this nice keyword array. So if you're not totally flabbergasted by that, I don't know what it will take. <laughs> I'm a big fan of regular expressions. You can also use it to replace some part of the string. So let's say um, I have a web application, <clears throat> and once again, users, uh, they, don't know, they never know what they're doing, so they input the phone numbers in all kinds of different formats, sometimes 10 digits in a row, sometimes with hyphens, sometimes with parentheses, and we want, to store it, we want to store it in our database in a nice, clean, uniform way so that it'll show up always nicely formatted. So we want to replace everything that the user input it and put it in that format. So once again, let's take our regular expression for phone numbers, the one that we saw a little bit earlier. And we'll replace it with parenthesis backslash two, backslash four, dash backslash six. Uh, those, are, those are called back references. So basically what it means here, it means, well, take the second element of your regular expression or the second one that matches and place it here and then take the fourth and the sixth. So that's why in my comments I've added item number two, item number four, and item number six. So we'll take the digits followed by the digits and the digits and we'll format it, format it the way that we want it. So if a user inputs this kind of phone number, you use it with P-Reg replace, and you will get this result. Isn't that amazing? And the last one that is often used in PHP is p match. So if you want to take, to make sure that the string matches some part of, it, of our regular expression. Let's take our last example once again with the phone number. We want to be able to extract those digits part. So, and we also want to know if, well, does it actually match a phone number? Is it the phone number? No matter how the user enter, uh, entered the, the digits or the hyphens or the parentheses. So if we take this, we take this input, which is a normal user input, and we try to match it, and we try to dump the match. We'll get this string, uh, we'll get this array, sorry. So as long as you have something in your array, it means that we had a match. Um, it's been a while since I've used Puric match, but uh, I'm not sure what it returns when it fails, but I think it returns zero or false. Or, yeah, I think it returns false if there's an error. False. Yeah. You, you have to do it. But, um, okay, so basically this is what it returns. So, yes, we get the first part, which is a match, and it returns the actual string that match. And we get all those array elements, which are the sub patterns that we used. So, whatever was between parentheses in my regular expression, they're all returned here. So, you can actually use some parts of the the match. Say you only wanted the regional or the area code, you can use it here. But it's not so cool. I mean, it's not formatted, and it's, well, it's the second element or the first element. So there's one really nice thing that you can do is using name back, refer back references. And instead of guessing, well, is it number two, backslash two, backslash four, you can also name them. So that's the last thing I'll introduce, I think. So it's the exact same regular expression for matching phone numbers that I've been using in the last examples. But this time, I've added this uh, question mark, P, and precedent, area code, greater than. So I'll just show you what the result is. It might be easier to explain. This is what you'll get afterward. So the p match will return you the array, once again, with all the elements that matches. But it will also return some named elements. And the key of the name elements will be what was specified next to the question mark key. <coughs> this is where it gets really, really useful. If you want to extract the area code, don't bother going through number two element or just use this. You have your area code and you can use it right away. It's really, really easy to use. So, so you're saying it becomes an associate, associate array? Yes, And we're almost done. Performance. Performance-wise, okay, that's all nice. Is it better than using the regular functions that we use? I'll just go quickly. Well, first of all, it does make your code a little bit nicer. Say you wanted to replace all uh, BRs in your HTML. 
Uh, it does take a lot of different cases that you'll have to match versus using a regular expression. Uh, you'll match all the BRs with all those different cases actually in just one line. Or is it really better? Well, I've run some tests. Um, I did a little benchmark of my own. So using the exact same example I just showed you, a few reg replace takes about a little bit less than half the time. So obviously it's in milliseconds, it's not huge, but if you have like a really big application, it does make a difference. And that's about it. So I've tried to find a little joke about regular expressions, but unfortunately it's not a lot of them. But I'll leave you on this comment by on this comic by XKCD. Thank you. I also had the book to give away. And I think I'll just give it to Andrew for helping me out with the laptop. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have time for questions or comments? Or is it all right? Yeah, does anyone have maybe one quick question? So, uh, what are the um, gotchas? Are there any gotchas or differences that we should watch out for working with regexes in JavaScript? Um, JavaScript is another. My film? Yes. JavaScript is a little bit different. Uh, you, will, you can use most of what I showed you in JavaScript also. Uh, the delimiters, the modifiers. Uh, modifiers are used in a different way, so like a second argument. So it's a little bit different. So, uh, they're a little bit different when you're using them in the uh, versus PHP. Uh, also, you can make them. Uh, you can use the X modifier, which makes them a lot, be, a lot easier to read, like I showed. But uh, yeah, it's basically the same thing I've been saying a little bit earlier. Uh, always be careful because sometimes it will match like in the uh, www.example.com case that I showed you. It doesn't always match exactly the same, the, the exact thing that you want. So you really need to write a lot of tests and it will make it a lot, of be, a lot easier. Hope that helps. Thank you very much. <laughs>